Welcome to Gym Wars with Doug Fisher and Gary Randall. Hey this there. week we feature Antonio Margarito and Sergio Mora sparring at a private gym in El Monte, the Teamsters Boxing Club. The guy in the blue tank top and blue boxing headgear is Sergio Mora, a middleweight prospect. Sergio Mora from the Contender. The Contender Zone, Sergio Mora. He's uh, born and bred in East LA. 13 and 0, three knockouts. He may actually have more fights in that 13 and 0. He, uh, being part of the Contender, we don't know. We don't know if he has one, two, three. We don't know how many more fights that he has. We just got to watch the show. He's being used in this sparring session to help Margarito prepare for his April 23rd showdown with Kermit Centron. Centron is a big, strong, power-punching welterweight, probably the hardest hitter in the 147-pound division. So his managers are looking for middleweights for Margarito to spar with. You'll see Mora fights nothing like Kermit Centron. He's pretty much your orthodox stand-up one-two boxer, boxer-puncher. It's pretty much a pointless sparring session. <laughs> it's not pointless. This is some good work here. Moore is 13 and 0, only three knockouts. Doesn't have a lot of power for a middleweight. You see here, he, he uses the ring. He's got footwork. Likes to switch from southpaw to orthodox stance. Good work right there by Mora. And he just fired a hook from the southpaw stance. Popping a nice jab, Sergio Mora. You see him switching right there. Just switch from southpaw to orthodox. He's a switch hitter. It works against most opponents, but against uh, Margarito, he just puts too much pressure, puts too many punches together, and you know it really doesn't matter what stance you are. Margarito's going to swarm you, so it makes no difference to Tony. This is a good exchange right here. That was good work on the inside by Mora. See Margarito doing some body work. And he never stops working. Doesn't <laughs> matter if you're holding on to one of the hand, the free hand's gonna work. Right, slipping a punch. We're not used to seeing a lot of that from Margarito. Sergio Moore is also slipping his share of punches. Nice right uppercut, left hook combination. He came back with the right cross. Mora comes back with the left hook. This is some good work. This is just the first round. I like seeing Margarito keep finishing up with that left hand, straighten himself out. We're seeing Antonio Margarito hold his hands up a little bit more than we're used to. Moore tries over and over again to land that lead hook, which is probably his favorite punch. And yeah. he can't get through because Margarito keeps that right hand real high. It has not gotten in once. No. Sure hasn't. Margarito's applying great pressure to Mora. It's not... He's not completely on him, but... Yeah, he's not Joe Frazier, but it's constant pressure. The kind of pressure that wears guys down mentally and physically. Now, what do you think Cintron's going to do? Cintron's going to fight his fight. You know, he's, he's, he's a pretty orthodox boxer. Comes straight forward behind a jab, doubles it up, throws the right hand, which is a, a very powerful punch, has a good left hook. Cintron works the body as well. I mean, with, between Margarito and Cintron, these guys are going to meet in the center of the ring.
and you'll note he's a little bit sharper. Not tremendously sharp. He's never going to be a, a perfect technician in there. He al he's always going to wing his punches a little bit, but I think he's a little bit sharper than he was in the early rounds against Sebastian Lujan, who he defended his title against uh, in February. And he's a little bit sharper than he looked against uh, Daniel Santos in a try for the WBO Junior Middleweight title in Puerto Rico last September. So here, work by Margarita. Yeah, I mean, here we see uh, Mora kind of covering up and trying to turn away from punches, and it's not working against Margarita because he just puts too many shots on you. Margarito, I mean, he's an accurate puncher. He's going he's gonna to hit you in the face if he can, but he doesn't care if he lands on your arms or shoulder. He just landed a nice lead right hand right down the pipe, too. Beautiful Mora. right hand. Yeah, Mora kind of looked at him like, come on, man. <laughs> Margarito obliged him. You know, Moore's doing kind of like a, a, a trying to do a lot of cagey stuff, like some, you know, like a Archie Moore cross arm defense, and doing a lot of fancy stuff, like switching from southpaw to, to an orthodox stance. But I'd, I'd just like to see a, a good old fashioned jab, just a constant jab, straightforward. I think he would do him a lot better than switching. I agree. To southpaw, which seems very ineffective. You see a lot of young fighters doing that these days. Also loading up with, with lead power shots like that left hook without setting it up with the jab. Because they watch the contender, Doug. <laughs> it's because they grew up watching Roy Jones Jr. I blame him. Margarito. Margarito obviously not modeling his style after Roy Jones Jr. He's busy and accurate. More like a Julio Cesar Chavez. But that's what we're used to seeing from Margarito. A lot of punches. What we're also seeing here is he's keeping his guard up. And he's slipping more punches than we're used to seeing. See Morris setting some, some good power shots up with the jab. Forcing Margarito back for a minute, but Margarito will never stay in the ropes too long. It also looked like Margarito blocked 90% of what was thrown. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a veteran of 36 pro fights. And, and Mora is, let, let me cap this off by saying, Mora is doing very well for a kid that's 13-0 and 0 against a seasoned champion like Margarito. Yeah, he's giving him some good work. And when they exchange on the inside, it, it's, it's even. I mean, he's giving as, as, as good as he's taking. And I, I've seen Mora spar before with you know, prospects and, and other world-class fighters. And a lot of times... The sparring gets heated because he has a bit of an attitude in there. I'm not going to say it's an arrogance, but he's got a bit of a swagger. And uh, I can see the cockiness. Yeah, a little bit of cockiness, which right. I think fighters, you know, they need. But other fighters pick up on that, and sometimes uh, it, it gets a little rough. Here you have some great back and forth action. Yeah, See, more, more trying not to give ground to Margarito. Exactly. And you know Kermit Centron is not going to give ground. He, he's not a guy who backs up. He's not a guy who plays the ropes. Kermit Centron's a guy who believes in his power. He's young. He's undefeated, 24-0, and 0, 22 by knockout. He's going to come forward on Margarito. I'm interested to see if Margarito is going to work Centron's body. Oh, you know the way he he's will. showing us right now. Yeah, you know he's he starting will. to invest in body work. And that and that's a big question mark that I have about Kermit Centron. I, I I've never seen anyone really commit to his body. I don't know if he can take a body shot over and over again. There it is. Final 30 seconds of the third round of sparring. I can tell you right now, this sparring session took place this past Saturday. I was there taking notes from ringside. Margarito, you couldn't hear this guy breathe. Sergio Mora, by this point, he's breathing very hard. He's grunting with every power shot. And he's throwing some heat in there right now. There's the left hook finally got through there. 
Yeah, when there's 10 seconds left and he's not boxing anymore and going for broke. Right. Here, see yeah, you're right. holding his hands Yeah, up. he's blocking, he's leaning back, right. He's Nothing avoiding shots and he's there. blocking shots, exactly right. And then took his moment. And he's not, he's not landing flush here on Sergio Mora either. Very good body work. Mora came back with a left of the body himself. That's probably the best way to keep somebody from hitting you in the body, nail him to the body. Here you see Margarita winging with those punches a little bit, which does make him susceptible to counter punches. And that's what we don't like to see. Hey, I want to see it. I want to see, I want to see Margarito and Centron go at it. I don't want to see a boxing match. Margarito timing more now coming in. You see Mori getting off with his left jab right here. When he gets off with that jab, you notice Margarito doesn't punch. Timed it, left uppercut, double right, 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 yeah, the right hand is accurate. And it's not, it's not so much accurate because Margarito throws it perfectly or he's so fast. It's accurate because it, it, he, he just times it well. Moore is fighting pretty well off the ropes here, landing some heavy shots. Great exchange there. Yeah, with a little left uppercut on the inside. Yeah, he's grunting. He's, yeah, he's really putting everything into these punches. Moore's got a lot of pride. He's showing it. He's still laying in the house. So here you see Margarito. Same work rate, same consistency. Goes right back to work. Look at yep. that. To the body and the head in combination. And I'm telling you, he's not even breathing hard. You can't hear him. Don't forget, Moore probably outweighs Margarito by 10 pounds. Maybe more, maybe like 15 pounds. These guys are dropping serious heat right now. Margarito is showing a little bit of defense. Certainly more than we're used to seeing from him. You see him getting under those shots on the inside. I like that. Oh, and that uppercut. Margarito loves the uppercut. Some good work. Good four rounds of work from Sergio Mora. Good luck in the contender, Sergio. <laughs> He's not going to have to fight anybody remotely as tough as Margarito in the contender. This is pretty furious right here. Great left hook inside. Yeah. That was one of those hooker cuts. Yeah. Kind of a hybrid. A hybrid hooker cut punch comes from an angle. Okay, work is done for Sergio Mora. In steps Marco Antonio Rubio from Mexico. He is a junior middleweight contender slash fringe contender. He has a record of 27, 2, and 1. 26 of his 27 wins have come by way of knockout. So this guy can pop just a little bit. And he just popped Margarito with the right hand. He's also a busy fighter. 
and he has a strange rhythm and style. It, it can be a little bit d difficult for people to get used to it. Keeps his hands very high. Although last September, he was blown out in one round with a single left hook from Kofi Jantua. Margarito's managers actually were trying to get Kofi Jantua as a sparring partner for this camp. Uh, Jantua either had an injury or he was out of the country or something, but he wasn't able to be a part of the training camp. But they got Rubio, and uh, Rubio has won twice since that uh, embarrassing first round loss to Kofi Jantua. In fact, his last fight was a decision win over J.C. Candelo. Margarito is still applying that pressure, and this is his fifth round of sparring. But now he's in with somebody who throws as many punches as he throws. So it's a little, little bit of a different look. And I'll mention again, this is Margarito's fifth round of sparring. You can't even hear this guy breathing. He's not breathing hard yet. And if memory serves me right, even though this is just halfway into the round, Rubio was already breathing heavy. That's that pressure by Margarito. It tends to wear fighters down. Very curious how, how that's been, going to uh, affect Cintron. And when somebody stays in your chest and he, and he keeps moving his hands, it tends to stretch you out a little bit. <laughs> it's mental. <laughs> it's very mental. Mental. Boxing is mental. And these sparring partners of Margarito, they're, they're, they're getting an education. Margarito's not just a, a veteran professional fighter, but he's also a veteran champion. He's held the WBO title for three years now. Nice Good one. left uppercut. And Rubio comes right back. Great counter. Yeah. And I think Rubio actually has the better jab, too, when he throws it. But this was phone booth warfare for, for, for most of this round. These guys elected good, good to... Good double right hand by Rubio yeah, there. They elected to fight on the inside. Both guys kind of look like mirror images of each other, you know? He just has good timing. Like right there. There's the margarito we know. Rubio coming back with a one-two. You see him swatting some of Margarito's punches. When Margarito doesn't really commit to that jab, Rubio just kind of swats it down with his right. Nice right hand by Rubio. Rubio's got some skills. He's got a little bit of savvy. He's got that right hand, and that's what Cintron has. Cintron has a monster right hand. Uh, Cintron... Cintron bar none is the hardest puncher in the welterweight division. And if that right hand is healthy, I, you know what? I don't know. I know that Margarito is a Tijuana badass. I know this guy is, is Mexican tough, but I don't know if he can take that kind of power. We'll find out.
Another thing about Kermit Centron, he gets the, the bulk of his power at the end of his punch. It would be interesting to see if Margarito can get real close to him, get up in his chest, what kind of power Centron's going to have with inside punches? Short uppercuts, yeah, short crosses and hooks. How is he going to react to that? Nice left uppercut. Great work by Margarito. Yeah, we know Margarito can fight on the inside. We don't know if Kermit Centron can fight like this on the inside. We will find out. Rubio is the naturally bigger man. Although he doesn't look bigger than Margarito, to be quite honest. He looks, you know, he's, he's one of these guys who gets power, but his arms are real skinny. I don't know where the power comes from, but he fights in the junior middleweight division. Margarito fights in the welterweight division. You know, one thing I've noticed, Doug, over the last six rounds of boxing we just watched, Margarito doesn't move back. No. He does not backstep at all, and I'm, I'm curious to see what, how that's going to affect Cintron. Oh, that uppercut is hellacious. <laughs> I mean, will we see Cintron on the ropes like that and Margarito going to work? I hope so. <laughs> that should be some nice action. I don't think Centron is willingly going to back up to the ropes. If he gets up against the ropes, it's because Margarito put him there. You know, Centron circles a lot. Well, you know what? There's just usually no reason for him to back up. Good job. He's normally throwing his punches and guys are getting knocked out. I was impressed with Rubio's work, and I haven't been that impressed with Rubio's pro fights, the, the three or four that I've seen, but I was uh, impressed with his gym work. He showed a lot of savvy in there. He's very good at, at carrying and blocking punches. He fights off the ropes very well. And I think he's giving Margarito some excellent work. He's certainly not intimidated by Margarito. The yeah, a very rare moment with Margarito up against the ropes. He never stays there very long. And I can tell you right now, he is not breathing hard. Oh. Rubio is breathing hard and grunting with every punch, but Margarito is as steady as ever. This is a good round for Rubio. Yeah, I think, I think Rubio is more than holding his own. I should mention that uh, this is the last round with Marco Antonio Rubio. Margarito does three more rounds for a total of ten rounds of sparring. He is in tremendous physical condition for midway through the training camp. And his manager told me he only took a week and a half off after that uh, Sebastian Lujan fight. Intercamp. There, there's that defense yeah. that Margarito looks like he's been working on. He, you know what? He's he's he's, he's never going to be uh, uh, known as a defensive fighter. His offense is generally his defense, but he's going to need more than just an offense against Kermit Centron. Yeah, you know, he looks like he's just added a little bit to his game. Exactly. Slight head movement, a little bit of upper body roll. Movement. Right. Getting under punches every now and then. Good combo by Margarito. Hey, good work. Very good seven rounds of sparring. And of course, Margarito has three more to go. Got in there with a young prospect out of Dallas, like nine and one. Pretty much worked the kid over too. And actually, it wasn't until the 10th round of sparring that I hear Margarito really breathing heavy. 
So we know uh, April 23rd, Margarito is going to be in shape. <sighs> Getting caught, though. Getting hit with some right hands. And that's what you don't want to be hit with by Cintron. No.